a little bit different scenery this time. Wherever you're watching me from today, I hope that your day is going fantastic, and that you've got a smile on your face, and joy in your heart. <laughs> you know, I've never seen the Rocky Horror Picture Show, and I think maybe I'll go tomorrow. It's tomorrow. Maybe that's a great Mother's Day thing to do. But what I'm going to talk about today is unconditional love. And what does that mean? Do you believe in unconditional love? Have you ever experienced unconditional love? Hey guys. No, no, it's good. It, <laughs> it all adds. It all adds. So, unconditional love. Do you believe in it? Is it possible? Is it real? It sounds so good, right? Unconditional love. No conditions. Just only love. Well, let me let you in on a little secret. Unconditional love is our true essence. It is what we are at our core. And we don't have to create it. We don't have to build it. It's actually there. And this whole transformational process that I talk about of going inward to find that inner peace and to find that inner joy, your fulfillment, your birthright. It's your birthright. It's our birthright. <laughs> How cool is that? And so all we're doing in this process is literally just removing the emotional debris that stands between us and unconditional love because it is at the core of our being. The only thing that says otherwise <laughs> are the thoughts that we've been conditioned with. You know, we've grown up only experiencing conditional love. And I know that that, can, that statement can touch on some people's sensitivities. Because as I said in one of my videos a couple back, you know, most parents would say, well, of course I love my kids unconditionally. And most people would say that their mom and dad did their best and loved them unconditionally. Okay, But I make a distinction <laughs> between undying love, which those things are. You know, I have two kids and my love could never die for them, ever, no matter what, ever. Okay, but I have not loved them unconditionally, unfortunately. You know, I've gotten angry with them and, you know, frustrated with them and, you know, well, how could you do that or, you know? Because when our emotional triggers are activated by our life circumstances, oh, and that part comes up, that annoyance or that frustration or that, you know, that we've all experienced. The person on the receiving end of that, whether it's us on the receiving end or the people on the receiving end of our energy, it doesn't feel like complete acceptance. It feels like there are conditions, right? You know, you have to do things mom and dad's way in order to be told that, hey, you're a good boy, you're a good girl. And we get conditioned to, like, because we want that approval. We want that validation because deep, deep, deep down, we know that we're good. And so when people tell us, oh, you're doing good, we tend to adapt. And that's ultimately what happens through our childhood conditioning. And it's all part of this beautiful human experience you know it's not bad it's good because what happens is you come out of your life circumstances as a youngster you know by the age of seven most of our operating system is is formed and by the age of 14 it's pretty ensconced we've become who we are at that point <laughs> And then the process, if you choose to accept it, your mission, if you choose to accept it, to find freedom, true freedom, and to experience unconditional love, it's to start to take a look at yourself and the things that trigger you, the things that make you uncomfortable. And when you make the switch, the big switch, is when you stop blaming others, stop pointing the finger, and turn that finger around <laughs> and say, hey, what's going on here? What's going on 
in this heart of mine, when I get upset, when I get lonely, when I feel dejected, when I feel like no one understands me, no one loves me, and I've been there, then I know you've been there. Because we're all human. <laughs> but what I want to encourage you today and give you permission and invite you to give yourself permission is to start experiencing unconditional love by first giving it to yourself. Because you are good through and through and through no matter what you've done, no matter how hurtful you've been, even if you've murdered someone, okay? Now, I don't take any of these things lightly. Don't get me wrong, okay? If you're someone who's been hurt or if you're someone who's done something that you don't think is forgivable, I don't make light of any of that, okay? I'm here to support you in any way that I can. But I'm also here to tell you that you're good. You are well-intentioned. Anything that you've done, you know, whether it's come out of a fit of rage or you're trying to hurt someone, whatever it was, it's forgivable. And you can start by forgiving yourself. Knowing whatever you've experienced has brought you right to where you are right now on this day. And right now it's May 9th, 2015. Where I am, here in Boulder. So I invite you, if you want to experience unconditional love and become that, so you can shine it to the world around you, which is so fun and so great, is to give that gift to yourself. As you become more of yourself and you start being who you truly are more and more and more and more and more and more and more, letting your true nature out, wearing the clothes that you like to wear, saying the things that you like to say, speaking in the volume that you like to speak in. <laughs> there will be people around you who won't like it. And that's okay. But that's the time when other people start to, you know, put pressure on you or, you know, become unsettled or uncomfortable by who this person you're, you're that you're transforming into. That's the time when you can get some quiet, get some silence. And no matter how bad you feel or how uncomfortable you get, just know, look in the mirror. It's a beautiful exercise. Just look in the mirror. Look right into your own eyes. Gaze with yourself for a little while and just say, I accept you completely. I love you completely, fully. Because there will be bumps along your transformational journey. <laughs> it wouldn't be a path of awakening if it wasn't. It's not easy. It's not easy, but you've got support. You've got me, and you've got lots of other people. Facebook, you know, with all the flack that it catches, Facebook is such an amazing resource for all of us to connect and to come together to find each other, to find like-minded people, to find like-hearted people who will support each other. So as you take these steps into your beautiful unfurling, see there's a rainbow in you that wants to birth out. Sometimes it feels like anger, sometimes it feels like sadness, but it's those feelings that get uncomfortable. And when you're surrounded by loving support, and when you give yourself the support. You know, if you lose your cool and you yell at somebody and you just, ah, uh, you know, maybe at Thanksgiving or something with your family, you just can't, ah, uh, and you just finally say the things that you've wanted to say. And you speak your truth. Okay, there's going to be a part of you that the thoughts come up that say, you shouldn't have done that. You know, that's why people don't like you or that's why you have so many problems because you can't control yourself. That, my friends, is not true. Okay. Expressing freely, it takes some courage and it takes time to work through and let out those emotions because they've been repressed. They've been bottled. And when you first start to let them out, it can look a little different, feel a little different. But what I'm inviting you to do is to get quiet. 
<laughs> and when that part acts up and your heart is beating fast and you're nervous, like, what did I just do? Just hear my voice right there with you, encouraging you to tell yourself, I love you regardless. And I'm proud of you for taking a step in this direction because honesty is the best policy. And as I say, authenticity is king. Who doesn't love authenticity? Being true, being real. Like Shakespeare said, to thine own self, be true. Because no one else can be true for you. Only Lotus, you. Hamlet, yeah. Act 4, Scene 2. See, this guy knows what he's talking about. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> it's so fun. So if you take nothing away from this time here with me today, just take away that when you feel dejected, when you feel unknown by your family, by your loved ones, by the people at work, just know there are others who can see you and support you and be fine with you just the way you are. No need to change you. No need to give you advice and to push on you, but just to be here with a smile and say, whatever you do, you can never break my love for you. Never. Because I've done those same things. And it's a part of this unfurling, is letting this stuff go, these repressed things that we've held back. We can let them go, let them fly. And it's beautiful. It's like a rainbow across the sky. The different colors, all different colors. Sadness, anger, loneliness, all of it joy, hope. And so on this Mother's Day weekend, I just want to say I love you. I'm for you. And if you walked right up here with me, wanted to go see the Rocker, Rocky Horror Picture Show with me, I'd say absolutely. No matter what you've done, no matter who you are, because I can only see the light in your eyes and it looks like me. It looks like what I know about myself. I love you. Have a great day.